John Whelan, I work with uh, Trinity College. Hi, Brian. Um, we're, I run a team that's responsible for student entrepreneurship support in Trinity, student startups. Uh, Trinity has now decided from the top that the traditional path for a student was, the traditional two options were continue in research, go on and do a postgraduate, or take up employment in a, in, in a company. But the third option, which is very much at, to the forefront of what Ireland is trying to do in the Irish culture, is that uh, you can start your own business, create your own economy. So, this talk is really just about a recent survey, and it's, it's not just a survey, it's not qualitative, it's quantitative, that's ranked Trinity number one university in Europe for producing entrepreneurs. So I just wanted to explain how that happened. It was a bit of a surprise to us when this data came uh, to us, but uh, UCD is ranked number four. So there's some reason that in Ireland we are producing, our universities are producing more entrepreneurs than any, any other university in Europe. And that, that's... Uh, so how, how did this happen? Um, So here is the data that was published. It's, it's, it's created by a, an American uh, organization based in Seattle called Pitchbook. And what Pitchbook do, when we saw these data, the first thing we did was call up Pitchbook and say, how do you, how do you gather these data? And they said they, they look at, over the last five years, every VC transaction, every private equity transaction that they can find, either through filings at regulator, regulators all over the world, press, PR, and uh, they hired, they have 200 people working in the organization. They sell this data, the, the raw data, we wanted to buy the data, but it's 15,000 euro a year to get the raw data. But the key thing, you can see that Trinity is ranked number one outside of America. Uh, Stanford is number one, MIT is number two in the world. But this year is the first time they ranked it outside of uh, all the Europeans. Uh, actually, it's the rest of the world, it's not just Europe. So Oxford is second, University of Manchester, then UCD. It's great to see two Irish universities so well positioned. The key statistic is the number of entrepreneurs that have raised significant VC. And uh, if we... Uh, if we chart it there, you can say that see that Trinity is actually far ahead of the other, uh, the next best, which is Oxford, who produced uh, I think 72 entrepreneurs that raised VC over a five-year period. And we actually did see the raw data. We actually saw the raw data from VC subscribed to this system, this Pitchford system, and we saw a list of the 114. Trinity graduates that had raised VC in the last five years. So we were able to verify the data. So we're not going to claim that we're doing anything unique, but here I just want to outline the supports that we do have. So there's a number of supports in Trinity for students to become entrepreneurs. There's the Innovation Academy, which is about teaching. The key thing is we're not I'm not a teacher, I'm not a lecturer, I have no interest in teaching entrepreneurship. There's a real question, can you even teach entrepreneurship? It's in the blood. But we can guide, we try to guide students. Also, I would like to think that I'm a practitioner as well, and all the people that work with us have had startups. I raise money from VCs uh, twice, um, had a startup that went for seven years, and I had a startup that went for three years, so we have real experience. We're not, we're not teaching a course, there's no exam. The key thing about entrepreneurship within the university environment, and maybe within the Irish environment, the, 
the Irish education system is very easy to gain. You know, it's about exams, so you go to grind school, you do your leaving cert. It's very transparent, it's very democratic. There are no interviews to get into university, so it's very fair. But the students are experts at gaming, but you cannot game entrepreneurship. The only way you can win at entrepreneurship or succeed is by getting customers or getting uh, financial support. So that, that filters out a lot of students, actually, that you know, have, are very good at gaming the, the exam system. What's going to come up in the exam? But we work one-on-one -on -one with students. We sit down with the support of Blackstone, who gave us support to do this. We, have, we run one-on-one -on -one sessions as student registers. We meet them, we sit down, we talk about their specific needs. We introduce them to people. We, the most powerful and practical thing we do is introduce them to the Trinity Network. We know people in their sector that may be able to help, may be able to help them. So that's what Blackstone does. The other thing we do is we have an accelerator for students that runs during the summer. So this summer, starting in a week's time, after exams, we, we pay students 350 euro a week to work in their startup. We, so we give them 10,000 euro to eight different startups every year. And they're, they're starting next, next week for the summer. And we try to filter out the students that are doing this for their CV. We're looking for real businesses, real entrepreneurs, real risk takers. And that's through the Launchbox program. So here's a short little... Uh, I'll leave this running in the background because I don't think I've got video. So this, now there isn't any audio on that, but this is just a, a short video that shows how this incubator works just to give you a feel for what it is, where you get 13 student companies. These are real companies. In, these are not student projects. And they all work together over the summer on their idea. And we've had considerable success from this. It was initially supported by financially by successful Trinity entrepreneurs. Sean Blanchfield, you saw there, he, he, sounded, he founded Demonware. He now is running Page Fair. Uh, I'll skip on past that. Two key points, two key words I would say are experiential and co-curricular. As I said, this is not about teaching. This is experience. This is doing your real company. It's not a project. There's no exam. You go and try and build a business and win and win customers. And all we do is we, we're not didactic. They, there's a lot of controversy in Ireland now, and I think it's very justified about mentorship that there are too many mentors. Everybody's claiming to be a mentor. There is a whole industry built around mentorship. But have these mentors formed a company? Have they raised money? And nobody knows what, nobody can tell a startup, if you're a startup, this is what you should do. Nobody knows, so we try to guide people, you know, give them options, let them make the decision themselves. We try to, and inspire confidence. It's very easy for government agencies, to, many government agencies here that have been referred to earlier, earlier on and they'll meet a company and they'll dash their confidence in the first meeting. You know, with students particularly, we do try to, in the first meeting, try to inspire them, try to nurture them, try to give them some more confidence. So we have a space now in the library. It's interesting that within the library in Trinity, in, in Berkeley, the Berkeley Library, the main library, we now support entrepreneurship within the foyer of the library. That's just an example of the space where we are working uh, outside the Berkeley Library. Yeah, I mentioned Blackstone. This is the T-shirt launch last summer. Uh, Steve Schwartzman, this, the CEO of Blackstone, is a personal friend of the T-shirt. He came over. His personal net worth, according to Forbes, is $12 billion. He came to Trinity to launch Blackstone supports not just in training but also in NUI Galway and also in UCC. And we run a series of events during the year to help students, different uh, events, to let them know the funding sources that are available, competitions they can enter, uh, all kinds of specific topics that could help them move forward. The system that comes with Blackstone uh, tracks the progress of the students through the, 
through the, uh, the steps, the journey uh, to, to bringing their startup to the next step. All we want to do is bring them to the next step. If they just have an idea, we'll bring it to the next step. If they, even if they don't have an idea, we'll help them formulate an idea through idea generation workshops. And two key challenges that we have within uh, within the third level environment. You're probably aware of this. But, and they're very related actually. One of the challenges is to gender diversity, to get more women involved in startups. We have 32% of all the students that are registered in our system, uh, our entrepreneurship system, are, are women. But we find that that drops off as we go to each stage. So we really are trying to tackle that. The other challenge is to engage students from the non-technical, from non-STEM, from humanities. And that's the thing that we're really serious about. We really want to lead. We want to be a uh, thought leader in that tackling those problems. And uh, here are some just examples of some students that, that have gone through. Um, we we ran a hackathon for students to tackle the uh, to tackle climate change, where students come together, engineering and humanities students come together and try to come up with solutions that are viable to tackle climate change. Here's a, a, a student um, that, he's a celiac himself, so he set up this, this uh, platform, Deliac, which gives you great offers in Irish restaurants for celiac. You actually get 50% off in Milano's if you register and get the card. Um, and only one person in the group has to order a celiac pizza. The seven or eight people get 50% off. So we're just pitching. But that's a, he's a great student. He went around and spoke to every every restaurant in Dublin. And he's, he went to Cork. He's going, going to Limerick. He's really doing very well. And he's got some really good offers. So we're just giving him a little pitch as an example of the kind of things we're supporting. Um, the connections we can offer. Uh, here's an example. One of the student ideas that came to us this year is a platform called Cryserve, which is an app to help refugees. Social entrepreneurship is the biggest trend we see amongst uh, student startups. Um, not not for profit, but generally, definitely trying to generate revenue to support themselves, to make a sustainable, viable business, but putting the profits back in to solve a problem. So the students came with an idea with an app, they actually built a prototype that as refugees approach a European border, they can register their requirements. 87% of refugees have a smartphone with data access that approach Europe. So that was, that was an interesting statistic that we found. But this app can allow them to share their needs, to start pre-processing uh, immigration documentation online. But we were able to, through the Trinity Network, we were able to introduce them to another student who had previously gone through our program, who now works for the UN World Food Program Accelerator in Munich. It's just been set up, it's opening in July. So he had been working with a, 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 another of our companies, Food Cloud, you might have heard of them. They work with Tesco Recycling Food. They're one of our biggest successes as regards PR. They now employ 10 people. They're working with Tesco in the UK. But we were able to connect Food Cloud, a person who worked with Food Cloud in the humanitarian area, now working in the UN World Food Program in Munich. And you know, we had a conference call in our space with them. So that's just an, an example of the concrete supports we offer. Um, yeah, I don't worry about that. So here are some other success stories in, to the Launchbox Incubator. Over one million in full professional funding has been raised. Over 20 jobs have been created. Um, for me, the biggest success has been, um, yeah, that's just a summary of an infographic showing the success. Um, this was one of the students, that was a PhD student who had some real tech, Eric Risser, he's from Florida. He completed his PhD in uh, computer science and image processing and he came to us with an idea for a company. We matched him with a business person who's now the CEO, and he got to speak at 
TechCrunch Disrupt and the finalist in TechCrunch Disrupt in San Francisco. I mean, and this is, I don't know if you watch that TV show Silicon Valley, if you watch that, they all went, Silicon Valley, they all went to, we went to this show. This is the number one pitching competition in the world for tech startups. So that was a great achievement for, for us um, and for Eric and for the company, Artomatics. Also, Time Magazine featured, I mentioned Food Cloud, Time Magazine featured Isol Ward, the, the founder of Food Cloud, who we supported in Launchbox. And they put it in the print edition, this is the website, but it was in the print edition, one page, Leaders of Tomorrow. They gave her a full, full page coverage as to what she has done uh, and how she is a potential leader of tomorrow. And a final example would be that um, Enterprise Ireland has a stand every year at the Mobile World Congress, which is the number one um, mobile technology conference. And the top Irish companies get, a, get, to, get on the stand. And we, a student company from last year called Sitespy, they got uh, they got a place on the stand. So that was, that was a that was a great achievement. So I just finish up. By quoting, Pat Phelan was mentioned earlier, by the previous previous speaker, and uh, Pat's a great guy. He's you know he's kind of uh, almost he'd hate this phrase. So he's a celebrity entrepreneur, but he does he, he calls people out, and he's the person that's behind this uh, topic that there are too many mentors and too many accelerators in Ireland, too much supports, and rather than you know I'm paraphrasing him here because representing Trinity, I couldn't quote exactly what he said, but he said, just go out there and make stuff that people would pay for. It's as simple as that. That's what it's about. That's what we try to encourage people to do. So uh, apologies to Pat for that. But, uh, um, I appreciate your time. If anybody has any questions. Yeah. The, the question is regarding uh, the involvement of Blackstone Launchpad. What is the these disposable financial terms, what is the percentage ownership in companies, how does that work? Oh, that's a good question. No, Blackstone, it's purely a donation. It's the Blackstone Charitable Foundation. Yeah, yeah. The, what was the amount? The, the, the way it was an amount, uh, they don't invest directly in the companies. They don't put money into the companies. For our program, it was, for the whole of Ireland, they also did NUIG and, for Go and they also did UCC. So the figure that was publicized was two million for all. It's, uh, I, I can't say that wasn't. It was, I think I, I think it is more or less equal in fairness. But Black, Blackstone have been have been great because they were plugged into the Blackstone network as well. For example, the Blackstone board meeting is on in New York on the third of June, and they came to us and said, you know, Blackstone have three hundred billion uh, under assets under management at the moment. But they asked for they would give a gift to all the 30 members of the board of products produced by student companies. So we have given two of our student companies, they bought 30 of the product to, to give to the members of the board. And even that is a good connection. Okay, thanks very much. So the next speaker... Uh